Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm walking out to the barn to take the milk out of the freezer and thought I'd bring you guys with me. Talk a little bit about the cows. The last handful of months since I uh, started dealing with my skin issues, Maya took over milking. Now that I'm starting to feel a lot better and get stronger, I'm gonna be taking uh, part of that back. He's, well, you know, what we were doing previously is like he would milk in the mornings, I would do it in the evenings. But I would hand milk and he would use the machine and I'm gonna have to use the machine um, right now because of my skin still susceptible to breaking out. There's Helen. Hey girl. I'm just enjoying some hay. Here's Freya. Hey lady. What's up? Now over here, y'all are gonna hear the sheep hollering. Two little ewes. We'll come back to them and I'll tell you what's going on with them. But right now we're gonna walk away from them because they're loud. We're gonna come see Fern. So here's Fern, which, you know, she's due in just not very long. She's due in the beginning of March. She's not bagging up a whole lot yet, but um, she sure does love, no, don't eat my jacket, silly. <laughs> she does love att attention. I was concerned a little while for her because she just seemed so huge. N now, maybe less so. I mean, she's definitely very pregnant, but maybe not quite as disproportionately large as she seemed there for a little bit. I'm surprised I'm not seeing more bag development on her, but she is a heifer. This is her first calf. So that's not terribly unusual to not have a lot of uh, udder development yet. She's got a little bit, not a lot. Now down here is Delmer the calf, who is now about 10 weeks old, 11 weeks old. He was born right before Thanksgiving. Hey cutie boy. What's up sir? What's up? And in here, and here are all of our yearling calves that are being uh, weaned. And this is kind of just like a sacrifice area. They're just living on hay. They've got minerals and stuff like that in here. And uh, we're about to change this around too, but this is just what we've been doing for this winter to keep them all from nursing on their moms because all of their moms are pregnant again and uh, we don't want, obviously, them causing damage from nursing on mamas that are trying to grow babies or that have already had another baby. Like one of the Devons has already had the calf some months ago. She was feeding both of them and getting skinny really. So here we have, this is a heifer a Devon heifer. Back in that corner is a heifer. This guy right here is a steer calf. There's another steer calf on the back side. And there's Hallelujah, um, our Jersey heifer that was born here one year ago, actually. She just had her one year birthday. Hey, pretty girl. Hey, pretty girl. So this is Jenny. Hey, Jenny. She's the one that is pulled and that I'm hoping to get her to warm up to me. She's starting to warm up to me. I come and sp spend time with her, try to get her to love on me. Of course, by bringing treats out here to try to make her my friend, the others have taken interest also. Uh, but she's the one who I'd like to try experimenting with milking her to see how the Devons do, like a straight Devon, how it does for milking. Now, we're about to let the steers back out into the main pasture, see how they do with um, leaving their moms alone. Because there's no reason for them to not be out there. It'll be on the larger area. And then we're gonna try to start training these cows to electric and uh, set up a pen for them out here in the property. Like, actually it's Papa T's. He lets us use his property. Um, and set up a pen for the heifers and put all the heifers out there together because we don't want them to get into the main pasture because we don't want them to be bred. One, too early. Um, two, by their dad. Uh, Hallie's not related to our bull, but the other two are. And if we put them in their own pasture for a while, then we'll just have more control on the, the breeding. But basically this little sacrifice pen, uh, that's where you take your animals, you put them on a small space knowing that they're just gonna completely wreck the grass and oversaturate um, the soil with nitrogen. 
now mm -hmm. it will recover when we get them off of here and the grass will grow and it'll probably be really lush in time but like right now that's just completely wrecked um, and they're also just living off of hay there but there's not grass growing anywhere so um, that's just kind of a common thing to do in the winter but I'm ready to get them off of there it's not that's not my favorite way to handle things Delmer oh did I scare you buddy now Delmer hey babe his face is getting dark Delmer is a beautiful young Jersey bull calf um, that is very curious my camera right now hey They like you. <laughs> Before anybody comments on it, the screaming in the background, my kids are playing. Those sound like agitated screams, but they're boys. They just make a lot of noise sometimes. They're okay. Delmer. So he was born to Freya right before Thanksgiving. She's over there separate from him right now. Now he is still nursing, but uh, we have taken to keeping him separate much of the time and then letting him in in the evenings to nurse for a limited amount of time. Because Freya had started holding back her milk. So she went from giving three gallons of milking to giving about half a gallon. And uh, we, he's not old enough to, to fully wean yet. And we like to give them more time to nurse than like the minimum. We, we usually like to let our mamas keep their babies on that for really kind of more of the maximum time. We weaned Hallie when she was about, I think 11 months old. So, I mean, we let her nurse for a really long time. We don't want to wean him early, but we need her giving us more than, you better quit licking that camera. We need her giving us more than half a gallon per milking, obviously, with the amount of money that we're spending to feed her. I'm gonna have to pick this up or he's just gonna lick it till it falls over. So my friend Hannah had suggested kind of separating them more during the day, still letting him nurse but not all day long uh, because essentially she's probably holding back for him and that worked after a few days of kind of keeping them they're still where they can see each other through the fence so they're actually not upset they're not bellowing and she started letting her milk down and he's old enough that he's growing just fine without constant access to the udder we've had a little bit of a hard time though deciding what to do with him so, because typically when you have a bull calf like this you make a steer of them and then they're used for beef. Now we have a couple of steers back here and we have, oh, you want your attention to? We have multiple pregnant Devons, which is the animals we actually have to raise for beef. And we considered keeping Delmer intact. Girl, would you, oh, is that the spot? Is that the spot? Um, you need all the attention. I came up to the barn because Fern is being very needy and it's very hard to hold a camera and talk while you have a cow demanding attention. Side note here, um, whenever you're milking at home, you want to get milk cold as fast as possible. I think, I think you want it to be 40 degrees Fahrenheit within one hour of coming out of the cow. Uh, and this helps preserve it, it helps it last longer. We put it in the freezer and then come out and move it to the fridge before it freezes, hopefully, if we don't forget. Which we're pretty good at not forgetting at this point, but you know, sometimes. If it freezes, it's not a big deal. You can still use it, but the texture's never quite right again. If, if it accidentally gets frozen, the cream never quite homogenizes back into the milk again. And uh, it's just a little weird because you have these like chunks of cream floating. Uh, so at that point, I usually use it for like smoothies or cooking or something like that. Uh, because whenever you like pour it in coffee, it's just like you have all these white chunks of cream floating anyway. Don't want to freeze the milk. Made it out here in time today. So regarding Delmer and what's up with him, we were kind of on the fence about what we wanted to do because he's actually a very well-bred calf and he's he's really well put together. His mom, Freya, is turning out to be a very good producer. It seemed like kind of a waste to just castrate him and use him for beef. It's not really, it's food, but 
when we already have multiple steers already on the pasture and more coming, I'm sure. It was kind of like, I don't really know what I want to do. And I had briefly momentarily considered maybe leaving him intact and using him to breed. But all I have heard about jerseys is that their bulls are crazy. Um, tons and tons of horror stories about jersey bulls just being absolutely awful. And I just didn't want to risk it with my kids here. Just, you know, I mean, with us... We don't really, it's not like we have like a massive place where we can ha give like a whole big pasture to a crazy bull. So we sort of steered away from that. Steered. We were thinking about going ahead and making him a steer. And then uh, basically a friend of ours said they knew somebody that was actually in the market for a Jersey bull that was an experienced cow handler. And so we were talking to them and I think we're going to leave Delmer intact and actually sell him when he weans so he can go be um the sire of another herd of cows and that i'm i feel good about that um I, you know i handle him just a little bit like he's used to being around us but we're not trying to halter break him or anything uh like that unless they came and told us that's what they wanted but i wasn't trying to do that because from what i have read and understand a highly handled bull doesn't really realize that it's a bull like it's been spent so much time around people that it thinks it's like on a peer level with people is more dangerous than a, an animal that knows it's an animal so obviously we're not gonna be cruel to him by any means but i've not been spending as much time like trying to get him to warm up to me on the off chance that he does end up staying intact and being somebody's herd sire and having to be around people as a full grown animal, I don't want to instill any habits in him that could hurt somebody down the road. Um, even though I know he's not gonna be here acting crazy on my farm, I just don't want, you know, I wanna make sure that he's set up to be a blessing and not a burden. Hey kitties. What's up girly? Little Zuzu? Zucchini girl? Oh, that's it. I think it's pretty normal for fixed female cats to get kind of fat, but all of my cats have started getting fat since they got fixed, which I've really mostly only ever had male cats, so it's kind of interesting to me that they look pregnant. Here's Chip. She's more, she's more uh, standoffish which is fine. She's a barn cat. She's not supposed to be my best friend. Zucchini did not get that memo. <laughs> oh, there's pretty toast. Hey, toast girl. Hey, toaster strudel. Hey, ladies. Hey. I'm trying to hold up my camera while also holding this water, uh, filling it up for the lambs. They have also been like contained throughout the winter, staying in the barn. But that is about to change as the grass has begun growing again. I don't know how much the grass is gonna keep growing. It just depends. We've had a really warm week and a half, but it's cooled off again, started freezing at night again. So I imagine the grass is gonna slow down. Everything's looking really green right now. The trees are even starting to bud um, because we were in this kind of fall spring. But uh, we have some uh, ram pins they're not that not just for rams but they were built for rams uh ben hauler made them and we bought them a couple i don't know back when we still had goats jeremiah had ordered a couple of ram pens from ben hauler and he had built them and delivered them down to us and that is actually what the lambs are going to go in uh, we've been using them for the pigs. We've been moving the pigs out through the woods with them over the winter, but we're actually going to set up like a larger area for the pigs. We're going to start training them to electric. They used to be trained to electric, but it's been a while, so they're going to need a refresher. And then the ewe lambs are going to go into one of the pens and move on the grass. We're going to put them out in the pasture and move them through there. Um, so yeah. They're doing well. They're just growing steadily. Uh, we've continued to try to get them used to us. And like, they, they talk to us when we come up now. If you sit in the pen with them, they'll come up. As you can see here, like they come up and check me out. But they're still not super about me, like trying to uh, touch on them a lot if I'm in the pen with them, so. Now these are gonna be mamas. Um, hey, hey Ramona.
So the bigger one is Ramona, this one, and then this little one is Tilly. They're St. Croix use, and we will get a ram at some point that's unrelated to them to breed them and grow the uh, flock a little bit. Fall is not really the best time to grow any herd and flock because you're going into the time where the grass doesn't grow. So it's just gonna cost more to keep animals over the winter and you're gonna have to keep them contained in places a lot of times rather than just having them out. Like with these little ladies, we didn't wanna have them out with the main, all the big animals, just cause they were so small and there's only two of them. So um, they've been really in the barn. Uh, but this spring, I'd like to get maybe one or two more ewes and then probably a ram and a weather um, just over the course of the spring and into the summer and I'm not in any major hurry on this I, I'd like to keep sheep just because it's a protein source that you can largely grow out on grass which I think is really cool because you know grass grows from the sunshine and so it's definitely more sustainable to have <laughs> grass-fed protein sources versus things that have to be raised on a lot of grain. But also don't really want to just get massively in over our heads. So I have kind of the idea of what I want this to be, but I'm not in any massive rush. I'm willing to wait to find the right animals. I just happened to come across a listing for these two girls and it was a breed that I was interested in. They were close. They were a pretty good deal. And so I thought, well, we'll start here and then we'll start looking for other stock elsewhere. I may crossbreed them. I might get a different breed of ram and try crossbreeding. They are hair sheep, which means they don't have to be sheared. Um, and that's what I want. Uh, of course, we have alpacas that we can shear for fiber, but not really looking to keep fiber sheep at this point. But these are a smaller breed. So if I do crossbreeding, I'll have to make sure that I don't get a ram that's gonna be too big for them to be able to handle the babies of. Hey, Cherry. What's up, girl? Cherry and chips look a lot alike. And they're both very standoffish. There's Miss Freya laying around. She's a sweet girl. We've really, really enjoyed her. Um, you know, we bought the heifers, Fern and Freya, because at the time we thought that Hope and Helen were gonna be calving at the same time and it turns out their AI didn't take and Anyway, we bought the heifers thinking, well, we'll milk them for a while, and if it's too much, we'll sell them uh, in milk. <clears throat> and I mentioned it to Maya the other day and asked him, hey, did you want to sell one of the heifers? And he, he's so funny. He's definitely gotten attached to these cows. He was like, no, Frey is the best one we have. And of course, he's especially fond of Helen. I definitely don't want her to hear that Maya said that Freya was better than her. <laughs> Don't worry, she's safe. She will be living the rest of her life out on Roots and Refuge Farm. My, that's Maya's favorite cow, um, even if she isn't the best milker that we have. He said he hated to admit it, but that Helen was actually probably the lowest producing cow that we have. Freya surpassing Hope's production on her first year though, it's pretty good because Hope's, Hope's a good producer. Now we'll see what Fern does. What Fern has going for her is that she's really sweet. I'm really praying that her calving goes well. She's just, she's such a petite heifer. I mean, she's, she's two, so she's old enough. She was bred to a Jersey bull, so she should have a small calf. She shouldn't have any issues. And of course, I was a little worried over Fern and we woke up to her calf. I didn't even see it born. Typically, they go just fine, um, but I'm a little bit of a helicopter mom when it comes to my animals and I'll just rest a little easier once Fern has had her calf. Just about an, another month, I think. Or maybe even right under a month because it's like, I want to say her due date may be March 1st. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll be on the edge of my seat, I'm sure. <laughs> so that's the update on our cows. A lot of information I know. We should have some calving going on out in the pasture with the Devons. Honestly, we've even discussed like if some if they don't start calving soon, that we are going to look into getting um, Bo our bull tested. Now we do have one calf from him that was born 
a few months ago. And um, Helen seems to have been bred by him. Hope keeps coming back in heat, so we gotta get some testing done to, on her. So I'm not sure, we're, we're gonna check him out soon though. If we don't start having some calves, because we should have calves by, the, for, by all of them by now. We'll, we're gonna give it a little while longer, I think, but um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Well, that's kind of the scoop on our cows, at least the dairy ones. There's not really that much new going on with the Devons. Uh, we are planning on trying to get some rotating pastures going for them as we come into the season where the grass is growing. But, I mean, we feel pretty good about how this winter is gone. We have a home dairy. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> so, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.